praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles this afternoon, and you would join me in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, we're going to begin at verse number 1, and we will read through verse number 11. The word of the Lord today from the King James text reads, To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose, to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to rephrase, to excuse me, to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in, in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Amen. I want to talk to us today on the topic, Is This a Good Time? Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me this afternoon, Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord once again in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you today, God, that you've allowed men, you've worked through men to place your words and your thoughts upon the printed page that we might read these words and by reason of the Holy Ghost, the author and the finisher of our faith, we might understand that which is written. As a preacher of the gospel, O oh Lord, I fully acknowledge that I can say nothing, I can do nothing, I can offer nothing that will help the people of God at this difficult hour. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I need your touch. I need you, God, to quicken my mind, my thinking, to quicken my spirit, Lord, that my lips might serve today as your divine vessel, that you might speak to the church today by reason of your word through your spirit. Use me today, O God, anoint the messenger of God. Help me, Lord, to speak that which you would have me to speak, and allow every hearer, those that are listening live, those who will later view and listen to this message by reason of the internet. Let every hearer benefit and receive the word which you offer at this hour. For we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. By this time next week, we will have passed... Another milestone, we will have written 
2020 into the history books. It will be complete. And we will embark upon yet another new year. 2021 is less than a week ahead of us. So you might call this today my new year message. I've titled the message, Is This a Good Time? You know, if you have any thought at all about other people, then a lot of times when you call folks, especially if you call them in certain situations, for instance, when I call Tommy at work, uh, I will first ask him, is this a good time? Because I know he's at work and he's not sitting there waiting to take my calls and he has other things going on. So when I call, I first and foremost want to establish, is this a time, you know, have you got a couple minutes to talk to me? I don't want to just start yakking at him, you know, and telling him what I'm going to tell him when he may be in the middle of a meeting or he may be in the middle of a phone conference or something and really not have time to devote to listening to me chattering on. So a lot of times we'll ask the question, is this a good time? Or if you've ever had a salesperson show up at the door to your house and they're trying to sell aluminum siding, or they're trying to sell attic insulation, or they're trying to sell solar. What always cracks me up about these people, they knock on the door, you answer, and they just start talking. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking to myself, do these people not ever consider that just maybe this is not a good time? Just maybe I was about to crawl in the shower or just maybe I pulled on my robe and ran to the door so I could answer it uh, ha after having gotten out of the shower, you know. Or maybe I'm not feeling well. Maybe I just crawled out of bed and I'm not even awake yet and all their jibber-jabber uh, doesn't even make sense to me because, I, I, you know, I'm too tired or I'm not feeling well enough to even care. But very seldom do they ever ask, is this a good time? No, they don't ask, is this a good time, till they've started on their sales pitch. And you have to kind of shut them down and say, well, you know, honestly, I don't feel well today, or I just woke up, or I just got out of the shower, or whatever the case might be, or I'm in the middle of bathing my dogs, whatever the case may be. Then all of a sudden they decide to ask, well, is there a better time that I could come and present this to you? Or is there a better time I can send someone to talk to you about this? But if you care at all about other people, if you care at all about... Uh, other people's time, then it's common to ask the question, right? Is this a good time? You want to make sure you're not just interrupting and you're not uh, causing a disruption in their day. Well, so many experiences in our lives seem to happen at the worst of times. Sickness, struggles, hardships, pains, economic troubles, even the death of a loved one always seems to arrive at a time when we are just not yet ready or able to deal with them. People frequently question God's timing, but it is not His timing that we ought to concern ourselves with, but rather His purpose in allowing that situation to come upon us at that time. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the Word of God tells us, He makes all things beautiful. All things, not most things, not some things, not many things. He makes all things beautiful in His time. It's interesting that first we read verse after verse after verse of times. There, there's a time for this and there's a time for that. There's a time for death and there's a time for life. There's a time for rejoicing and there's a time for mourning. And we read down this big list and then as we get 
closer to verse 11, we read that God makes all things beautiful in His time. We ask the question, Lord, is this a good time? Do, do I really need to go through this situation right now? Do I really have to struggle with this right now? Is this really a good time? God's answer is, um, by my watch, yes. What? You see, I'm trying to work in your life. I'm trying to do something in your life. I'm trying to create something beautiful. I'm not working on your timetable. Hello now, are you hearing me today, children? I'm not working on your timetable. I'm working on mine. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you understand that everything I'm doing, everything I'm doing is for your benefit. Everything I'm doing is for your good. Everything I'm doing is for a divine purpose. I have a divine plan for your life. And everything I'm doing is to benefit you. I don't do anything to destroy you. I don't do anything to tear you down. I don't do anything to cause you unnecessary pain or unnecessary struggle. But that does not mean that sometimes pain and sometimes struggle are not necessary. Any one of us who have ever endured surgery knows that as you come out of surgery, especially if it's more severe surgery, more serious surgery, you're going to hurt, and you're going to hurt for a while. It's going to be painful. It's going to be painful for a while, depending on what you're going through. The recovery process can take in some instances, days, in other instances, weeks, and yet, in other instances, it can take months or even years. I had a passenger in my Uber some time back when I was still able to drive Uber, and she told me how that she and her husband had come to Dallas so he could have back surgery. And... Uh, she said, you know, he's in a lot of pain and he's really struggling. And uh, after the surgery, and I said, well, how long a recovery did they tell you it would be? And she said, well, they told us that the entire recovery would take about two years. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's an awful long time to have to wrestle with issues that, uh, you you know, you're not... Uh, accustomed to having to wrestle with. But you know, folks, uh, there's never a good time for surgery because no matter how you slice it, afterwards you're going to be uncomfortable. Afterwards you're going to be in pain. Afterwards it's going to be difficult. And yet, interestingly enough, I don't know very many people that make their doctors wait until they've decided that the timing is right for their surgery. Hello now. And yet, the Word of God says there's a time and a purpose under heaven for everything, for everything, no matter what the circumstance may be. There is a time and there is a purpose, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. There's a time for everything. That doesn't mean we're not going to go through some painful times. Right now, we have a pandemic going on. We're going through a shut down in our country in many instances. Uh, many people are not able to work. Many people have been laid off. Many people have lost their jobs. It is a horrible time, and, and God knows it's a horrible time. We might look toward heaven and want to bring accusation against God. God, is this a good time? When would it have been a better time? Well, it would have been better if I had a few thousand dollars in the bank, really. And how good are you at saving money? Well, I'm not. 
So in other words, there never would have been a better time because you're not a saver anyway. So if God gave you 20 years, you still wouldn't have $10 in the bank. Am I telling the truth? Come on, let's be honest about it, folks. We can sit here and be dishonest. People love to bring accusation against God. But the Word of God tells us He makes all things beautiful. All things beautiful in His time. So therefore, whenever it is a time to mourn, it's a good time. Whenever it's a time to weep, it's a good time. Every bit as much as when it's a time to dance and when it's a time to laugh. Say, you know, you go to a party, you go to a wedding, you go to a shower, and afterwards somebody asks you, well, how did the shower go? How did the wedding go? How was the party? And you answer, oh, it was a good time. Hello now. It was a good time. You don't go to a funeral and say, how was the funeral? Oh, it was a good time. No, no. We don't say that when we go to a funeral. But you know what? If you have spiritual eyes instead of carnal eyes, if you look at things from God's perspective rather than man's perspective, which I'm going to tell you, I think I do. Because people look at me strange. I come from a funeral. Tommy and I went to his grandma's funeral. And boy, I'm going to tell you, I come out of that funeral saying, boy, I'll tell you, that was a good time. Hallelujah. That was a good time. What do you mean that was a good time? We just buried my grandma. Yeah, but my God, how we celebrated her walk with God. How we celebrated her service in the church. How we celebrated her faith. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel better now than I did going in. Hello now. Because when you understand things from God's perspective, all of a sudden things look different. You see, Everything that goes on in our life is not the enemy. Everything that goes on in our life is God. Amen. Instead of blaming the enemy for everything that comes upon us, we need to understand that God is working in our life. In Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30, the word of the Lord declares, And we know, Hallelujah. I love those words. I love that Paul started Romans 8, 28 with the words. And we know <laughs> that we have confidence. We are certain. We are sure. What are we sure of, Paul? That all things work together for good to them that love God. Then say we believe. We're convinced. We try to cling to the hope that all things... No, he said, and we know that all, all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are the called. Listen, according to his purpose. Well, what is his purpose? His purpose is to make something beautiful. Amen. Because the word of God said he makes all things beautiful in his time. So all things work together for good to them of God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Oh, wait a minute. So you mean the end of a believer's path is not to be rich? You mean the end game for a believer is not to be a celebrity? You mean the end game for a child of God is not to own a big house or to drive a big fancy car or to wear expensive clothes or to have costly jewelry? No! No, the end game for a child of God is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So everything God is doing in our life is designed toward that end. 
Oh my goodness. See, we go through struggles and we go through hardships and we go through difficult times and we look at it as an interruption in our goal to building wealth. We look at it as an interruption to our goal of living well. We look at it as an interruption of our goal to having nice things and doing this and, oh, I wanted to go on a cruise. I'd love to be on a cruise right about now. That would be lovely. It ain't happening. I'd love to be able to go to Florida. I've missed being able to go to Florida and visit my mom and visit my brother and visit my nephew. I really have missed it. Something awful. But it's just recovery time after surgery. It's just what you got to do. It's just what you have to do. Oh, my goodness. But I want to tell you today, folks. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the, who are the called according to His purpose. But what is His purpose? His purpose is to conform us to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, Romans 8, Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? Listen, if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. He starts out with all things work together for good and he ends with if God be for us who can be against us hallelujah we got so many believers just love to blame the devil for all their troubles and all their woes rather than understanding that every hardship every struggle every pain every trouble honey that is not the devil that is God you're a child of God you're in the hand of God hallelujah you belong to the Lord and the word of God said, nobody can pluck you out of his hand. You've got to remember the word of God said that every hair on your head is numbered. Don't you blame the devil for these things. No, all things work together for good to them that love God. Oh, all things. God is doing something beautiful. God is working in your life. You may not see it. You may not understand it. Sometimes in order to accomplish something beautiful, you've got to go through something painful. Joseph became a great man in the Egyptian society and in Egyptian government. He became well known. He became powerful. He became influential in Pharaoh's court. But before Joseph became those things, he had to go through a whole lot of hurt. He had a, there ain't nothing like having your own family turn on you. Boy, I'll tell you, if anybody understands that, I do. Uh, it, he had to go through his family turning on him. He had to be sold into slavery. We don't know how how many years he was in slavery. We don't know how many beatings he had to take. We don't know how he was subjugated and mistreated during those times. The Word of God doesn't tell us. Don't you think, don't you think for a moment that just because you're in the pit right now, that God hasn't got something beautiful set up for you. Hallelujah. That, oh, glory to God, before too long, you're going to be sitting in Pharaoh's court. Glory to God. Before too long, you're going to have power, and you're going to have influence, and you're going to have notoriety that you never dreamed of. You don't know what God is doing. We're told in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, at the end of our reading this afternoon, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, listen, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. God has purposely designed things so that our minds are worldly, our minds are earthly. And we cannot wrap our head around what he's doing. 
so that we can understand from the beginning to the end what's going on. Hello now. You see, that's why it takes faith. That's why we've got to learn to trust Him. That's why we've got to learn to lean on His greater wisdom. That's why we've got to learn to lean on His greater knowledge. He knows so much more than we'll ever know. He understands things so much better than we'll ever understand things. We don't know what God is doing. Paul and Silas wound up in jail for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, the enemy is punishing us for preaching the gospel. Oh, they could have spent the night in prison just mourning and grieving and whining and crying about how they were mistreated for preaching the gospel. But instead they worshipped God. Hallelujah. Instead the word of the Lord said they began to sing praises and they began to pray and sing praises unto God unto God and before the entire experience was over a Roman soldier had been led to Jesus and his entire family and in the middle of the night Paul and Silas took a whole family of folks out to the river <laughs> and baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and the gospel of Jesus Christ had made an inroad into the Roman society oh he makes all things beautiful in his time Oh, Paul and Silas could have sat in prison and said, Lord, is this a good time? But instead they said, this is a good time. We're going to have a good time. Hallelujah. We're in jail, but all things work together for good to them that love God. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? Let's have a good time. Let's pray a little. Let's sing a little. And like Joseph said to his brothers, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Hallelujah. What appeared to be evil and destructive in your life, God had a divine purpose to bring about great good. But it's all about his plan for our life and what he's trying to do. God's not trying to make us rich. God's not trying to make us Wealthy. God's not trying to make us into celebrities. He's trying to conform us to the image of His Son. In Romans 8 as well, verses 16 through 18, the Word of God declares, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. See, a lot of believers want to be glorified with Christ, but they don't want to suffer with Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then Paul said in verse 18, Romans 8, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. He says, oh, I'm going to tell you something. I've, I've come to think about it, and I've come to realize that when you try to compare the level of suffering that we may have to go through at times down here, because there's a time for the good and there's a time for the bad, it's not always bad. Hello now. According to our primary text today in Ecclesiastes 3, it's not always dark. There's a time for the good, there's a time for the bad. There's a time for the negative, there's a time for the positive. Life is a teeter-totter, you know, it keeps swinging one side and the other. We have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Sometimes we have a lot of this, and then thank God we have a lot of the other, amen. It kind of just swings like a pendulum back and forth from the good to the bad. He said, listen, if you take all the negative, all the suffering, all the struggle, 
and you put it on the scale and then you put the glory that is to be revealed in us on the other side he said oh I've come to reckon I've come to realize I've come to understand that that side with the glory is going to go down low and that side of the suffering is going to rise up high on the scale because there is no comparison hallelujah glory to God you can't even compare the good that God has in store for us with the negative that we've had to endure. Look at Jesus' example. Everything the Lord did his entire life was an example for us. In Hebrews 12, verses 5 through 11, Paul writes, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he, meaning God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Yeah, there are times we go through some hard times. And honey, it's God putting upon our hiney because we hadn't acted right. There are times when God himself has to chastise us and rebuke us. There are times when we need a little pain to remind us to get on the right track and stay there. Hello now. There are times when God has to uh, put us in our room and tell us we got to stay there a while. There are times when we're grounded. He said, aren't there fathers that have chastened us? Aren't there fathers who have corrected us? And they've done it for a few days. You're grounded for a week. You're grounded for a month. Hello now. But the end of that grounding is hopefully you're going to come out better after that time is over. There are times when God has to say, well, I know you want this. I know you want that. I know you're hoping to get there, do this or do that. But you know what? You're grounded for a while. i got to send you to your room for a while. You're, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. You're not going to be able to do anything. Hello now. Oh, you don't like it. Oh, it's not fun being there. But you know what? If God's doing that to you, you need to thank Him. Because that means He's looking at you as a son. Hallelujah. God doesn't correct other people's children. Amen. The Lord doesn't rebuke other people's children. The only children God rebukes, the only children God corrects are His own. Hallelujah. Almost done this afternoon. I hope you're getting something out of this. Too often as children of God we lose sight of our divine objectives and fall victim to worldly goals and desires. Our goal is not supposed to be to become rich, to be beautiful, to be admired, etc. But rather our goal is to be conformed to the image of Christ, to become a partaker of His holiness 
when we remember the end that God has called us to, then we look upon our experiences and our situations in a very different light. God is working His purpose. And He therefore is working on His timetable, not ours. Our present trial, our present tribulation may appear to have come at an inconvenient hour, but when seen through the prism of God's divine purpose for our life, the timing could not have been better. Hallelujah. Oh, we say, Lord, is this a good time? And God says, trust me, it's the best time. I couldn't have done this at a better time. I couldn't have done Oh, but Lord, it, I, when I look at it through my carnal worldly eyes, my human fleshly eyes, I just cannot fathom how the timing is good. I just lost a loved one that I felt like I could never live without. Someone whose presence in my life was so important and so embarrassing. And God says exactly. Now it's time for you and I to get a little closer. Now it's time for you to start to learn to lean on me, unless on Grandma. Hello now. Now it's time for you to start leaning on me, and a little less than on, on Auntie so-and-so, or on Mom, or on Dad. You see, God's got a divine purpose. He's, I'm trying to lead you into a place of holiness. I'm trying to lead you into the image of Christ. Well, i got news for you. Jesus didn't lean on any man. Hello now. Jesus didn't rely on any man. He didn't trust in any man. The Lord, uh, in his earthly journey, solely and entirely rested in God. And that's where God's trying to lead you. I don't understand God's timing. Why would he take this loved one from me at this hour? Um, believe me when I tell you that he's doing something beautiful. When God is done, if you'll trust Him, if you'll trust His plan, if you'll trust His objective, if you'll trust Him in what He's trying to do, then I promise you, when you come out of the other end of this tunnel, you're going to look a whole lot prettier than you did when you went in. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting today? Praise the name of the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verses... 11 through 13, the Apostle Paul writes again to the church at Philippi. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Oh, believer, you and I have an advantage today that the unbeliever doesn't have. First of all, we have the knowledge that every circumstance that comes into our life is God wrought, number one. We have the knowledge that everything God does in our life, He does for our benefit and for our good. We have the knowledge that if God be for us, then who on earth can be against us? Hallelujah. We know that in every circumstance, in this pandemic, in this financial struggle, in this hardship we're going through right now, you are not alone. If you're a child of God, you are not alone. Believe it or not, try to understand today, God is working something for your good. Let me tell you something, folks. I have gone through some extremely, I mean extremely difficult times in my life. Tommy and I this week uh, tried to help an old friend of his that happened to get in contact with him who's going through a very difficult time. And I was able to go online and send him some groceries through 
uh, Amazon and uh, he and his wife and uh, we were able to uh, try to bless them in some ways and help them in some ways the best we were able. Uh, there's a man I've talked about many times who runs a little diner here in Dallas, Texas. And he's a Hispanic man, a Mexican man. He runs this little diner. And I've tried for years to go and support him. I created a website for his diner to try to help him. Didn't charge him anything, haven't gotten anything for it. And uh, I went there this week and I told Tommy, I said, I feel led to do something. I know he's struggling. He, he's been trying to stay open in spite of everything. And he is not in a location where you can have a drive through or anything like that. He's in a little shopping center. And I told Tommy, I said, I know Jose and Paula, bless their hearts. I know they're struggling trying to keep their business open and, and trying to continue to make a living. So... I went to the restaurant this week and I ordered my regular hamburger. He makes one of the best bacon cheeseburgers you've ever had. I love his bacon cheeseburgers. He uses two kinds of cheese and he uses this beautiful slab bacon, you know, nice and thick. And he folds each slice, each slice is, you know, a foot long. And he folds it in half and he puts three slices folded in half over the top of the, the the meat and the cheese. I mean, it's a delicious burger. He only charges $6.70, including tax, for that burger. So I went into his uh, restaurant this week, and when it come time to pay, I gave him my credit card, and I said, Jose, I want you to ring up on the credit card $100. And he looked at me and he said, why? I said, I, I'm giving you a tip. I'm, I'm going to help you. I want to help you. I wish I could help you so much more. I wish there was so much more that I could do, but I can't. I don't have the resources. I said, but just ring up $100, please. So he did. And I signed off on it, you know. Uh, I, we're trying to do our best, you know. We're trying to help people. But, you know... I want to explain to you why I feel so compelled to help people, especially people that I'm, I'm fearful may be hungry, because I've gone through some periods in my life, folks, where I did not have a morsel of bread, I kid you not. I did not have a slice of cheese, I didn't have a piece of bologna, I had nothing for days and days on end. And I was so hungry. Oh my goodness, I was so hungry. There, there have been periods in my life where I've gone through these kind of experiences. And you know, I could sit and I could question God and I could say, Lord, why would you allow this to come into my life? Why would you allow me to go through this right now? Well, I don't need to ask God because as the years have passed, I know why, because I now understand hunger in a way that few people understand hunger. I understand need, I understand lack, I understand want, like few people understand these things. And I'm going to tell you something, I've got compassion and I've got sympathy in my heart for people who are going through these things. And I cannot, under any circumstances, sit back and let people be hungry if I know I can help them. I cannot sit back and let people suffer if I know I can help them. I have a friend who is actually a psychiatrist. And he told me years ago, he said, Chuck, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, I think you are one of the best qualified men on the planet that I know to be working in the field of ministry. And I said, well, thank you for that. You know, I figured he would just be a nice. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, let me explain to you. He said, I know your story. I know what you've been through in your life. I know some of the struggles that you've had and some of the things you've been through. He said, but do you know, he said, 
There are so many preachers and ministers in our world today who have never gone through that pain and that hardship and that struggle. And they don't have sympathy for survivors of sexual abuse. They don't have sympathy for survivors of child abuse. They don't have empathy for people who are struggling and people who are hungry and people who are going through financial struggles. He said, but you do. He said, and that empathy and that sympathy and that understanding that you have of these issues because of experiences that you've gone through in your life, he said, man, they, they enable you to minister in a way that many preachers do not. And I understood what he was saying. You see, I could have said to God at each of those experiences, Lord, is this a good time? And God could have answered, if you look at it from my perspective, yes it is. If you look at it from my timing, yes it is. Charles, in the end, I'm doing something beautiful. In the end, I'm causing you to conform to the image of Christ. In the end, I'm imparting unto you my holiness, my godliness, my righteousness. Lastly, today, Philippians 1 and 8. Again, the Apostle Paul writes, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, children, today remember this. In every circumstance and in every trial, God is working in our lives. There is never a moment when he is not working. There is never a moment when he is not trying to better us, not trying to strengthen us, not trying to cause us to look more and more like Jesus. So do not fear. It is God at work today and not the enemy at play, which has brought you to the place where you stand today. And he will continue to work. So you are not alone. You are not forsaken. No, not at all. God's working. He will work daily, hourly in your life. Right up until the day and the hour when we're finally able to behold him Hallelujah. face to face. Hallelujah. Oh, is this a good time? May not feel like one. But it is. God's working in my life. I don't know what he's doing. I don't always understand what he's up to. But God is working in my life. And he's promised me all things work together for good. He's promised me that he makes all things beautiful in his time. He's promised me that if he be for me, who on earth can be against me? Hallelujah to God. Oh, children, is this a good time? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Amen. Mm -hmm.